le Seigneur tous les peuples, et le tous les pays. Son amour envers nous s'est montré le Seigneur, et elle est la fidélité du Seigneur. La Señor, todas las naciones, aclamadlo todos los pueblos, firme su misericordia con nosotros, su felicidad dura por siempre. La In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hello and welcome to this Eucharist on the Feast of Corpus Christi, the holy, the most holy body and blood of Christ. It is uh, a feast that is not that old but it is extremely relevant for these difficult times in which we live because we commemorate that Jesus is with us, not just in our minds, not just in theory, not just in words and symbols, but really, he is really present whenever we celebrate the Eucharist, when the bread and the wine are tra transformed into his body and blood. And this reassurance is comforting in these times where we feel that we need him to be at our sides. Hartelijk welkom in deze Augustieviering in allerlei verschillende talen. Maar fijn dat u meeviert en hopelijk kunt u uh, genoeg van de viering volgen omdat we katholiek zijn en een mis in het Latijn of in het Klingon of in het Frans of in het Italiaans uiteindelijk allemaal ongeveer hetzelfde verlopen. Herzlich willkommen heute Abend. Siate tutti, benvenuti, um, bonsoir et soyez le très bienvenu dans cette messe sur le, la fête de Corpus Christi. Let us now take a moment to think about this past week. Let us ask forgiveness for the times that we were selfish, that we were impatient, that we hurt others, or maybe hurt our relationship with God. Let us ask the Lord to forgive us, to renew our heart, and to give us new strength and inspiration. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Seigneur Jésus, sauve des hommes qui Seigneur 
Jésus, justice des pécheurs, Christ Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord God, Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Lord, For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Preghiamo. Signor Gesù Cristo, che nel mirabile sacramento dell'Eucaristia ci ha lasciato il memoriale della tua Pasqua, fa che adoriamo con viva fede il santo mistero del tuo corpo e del tuo sangue per sentire sempre in noi i benefici della redenzione. Tu sei Dio e vivi e regno con Dio Padre nell'unità dello Spirito Santo. Io por... Per i secoli dei secoli. Amen. Lecture du livre du Deutéronome. Moïse disait au peuple d'Israël, « Souviens-toi 
de la longue marche que tu as faite pendant quarante années dans le désert. Le Seigneur, ton Dieu, te l'a imposé pour te faire passer par la pauvreté. Il voulait t'éprouver et savoir ce que tu as dans la cœur. Allais-tu garder ses commandements, oui ou non Il t'a fait passer par la pauvreté. Il t'a fait sentir la faim et il t'a donné à manger la manne, cette nourriture que ni toi ni tes parents n'aviez connue. Pour que tu saches que l'homme ne vit pas seulement de pain, mais de tout ce qui vient de la bouche du Seigneur. N'oublie pas le Seigneur ton Dieu qui t'a fait sortir du pays d'Égypte, de la maison d'esclavage. C'est lui qui t'a fait traverser ce désert vaste et terrifiant, pays des serpents brûlants et des scorpions, pays de la sécheresse et de la soif. C'est lui qui, pour toi, a fait jaillir l'eau de la roche la plus dure. C'est lui qui, dans le désert, t'a donné la manne, cette nourriture inconnue de tes pères. Parole du Seigneur, nous rendons grâce à Dieu. Lesung aus dem ersten Brief des Apostels Paulus an die Korinther. Brüder, ist der Kelch des Segens, über den wir den Segen sprechen, nicht Teilhabe am Blut Christi? Ist das Brot, das wir brechen, nicht Teilhabe am Leib Christi? Ein Brot ist es, 
Darum sind wir viele ein Leib, denn wir alle haben Teil an dem einen Brot. Wort des lebendigen Gottes, Dank sei Gott, den Herrn. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. I will first read the Gospel in Spanish and then in English. En aquel tiempo, dijo Jesús a los judíos, judíos, yo soy el pan vivo que ha bajado del cielo. El que coma de este pan vivirá para siempre. Y el pan que yo daré es mi carne por la vida del mundo. Disputaban los judíos entre sí, ¿cómo puede este darnos a comer su carne? Entonces Jesús les dijo, en verdad, en verdad os dijo, si no coméis la carne del Hijo del Hombre y no bebéis su sangre, no tenéis vida en vosotros. El que come mi carne y bebe mi sangre tiene vida eterna, y yo lo resucitaré en el último día. Mi carne es verdadera comida, y mi sangre es verdadera bebida. El que come mi carne y bebe mi sangre habita en mí, y yo en él. Como el Padre que vive me ha enviado, y yo vivo por el Padre, así, del mismo modo, el que me come vivirá por mí. Este es el pan que ha bajado del cielo, no como el de vuestros padres, que lo comieron y murieron. El que come este pan vivirá para siempre. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from the heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, amen, amen. I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. 
This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. in English followed by a couple of other languages. I don't know if you've ever watched or uh, watched the movies or read the books uh, of The Hunger Games. It was a popular young adult novel series that um, took the world by storm. It was very popular uh, a number of years ago and soon was followed by a series of movies, I think six in total. And I have the, the Blu-ray box which I ordered in, in Germany, so it says, Die Tribute von Panem, Die Tribute von, the Tributes of Panem. And it tells the story, for those of you that are not familiar with, uh, with the Hunger Games, of a, of a world in the near future that is divided, or it actually tells the story of, of the United States in the future that is divided in various districts. One district is where the rulers live, the rich live. Everybody has plenty of food to eat. There is entertainment everywhere. It's a very uh, media-based society where everybody watches movies and watches reality shows. And the most popular rea reality show is based on a fight between teenagers and other people from the remaining dis districts. The remaining districts are all dedicated to a certain certain jobs, uh, certain economic uh, functions. Um, and most of these other districts are suppressed. And the people there work to enrich the people in the main district of Pan Am. And once every couple of years, there is this big game, this, this uh, televised game where uh, a uh, a few of the um, uh, representatives, mostly younger people, have to fight uh, younger people from young people from the other districts to the death, and only one person can win. And it is a and and every every game is uh, is televised um, and and watched by the people of of the ruling district of Pan Am. A very cruel. Uh, society um, and the games themselves are meant to instill fear in the districts because there is um, a very particular reason that some people end up in the arena and that is if you need food if you are hungry because your district is poor because you want to feed your children or children want to feed their parents they can ask for food they can submit uh, um, a request, but the price you have to pay is that you enlist for those Hunger Games and your name will be in the bowl from which they will ultimately select the candidates for the upcoming Hunger Games. Everything in the story is based on this battle between those who have and those, the many, that have not. And in that respect, uh, it's just like any other science fiction novel. It, uh, it's a mirror of, it's a, an enlarged and exaggerated mirror of the society that we live in, the world in which we live, where a small minority has no hunger, has nothing that they lack, has plenty of entertainment, is able to live a superficial life full of joy and pleasure, Whereas the majority of the people on this earth are struggling to make a living, to feed their children, to stay healthy. And especially now in these times of the, where the coronavirus is, is still expanding uh, all over the world, we see that the countries 
and the, um, the areas that are most at risk are now the poorer countries, the continents that don't have the medical care that we enjoy in our Western world. And it's with fear that I follow the news because what will happen in, in Brazil, what will happen in Mexico, what will happen in, in many countries in Africa once this virus takes hold of the population. I think here in, in, in the Netherlands, we think that we're slowly getting out of this situation that we complain about every day, me too. We're so sick and tired of having to stay at home not being able to meet each other, to not being able to go to church. But what we don't realize is that these, what is it, 11, 12 weeks that we've been in this lockdown are still nothing compared to the horror of this virus uh, that is affecting other countries in the world where maybe there will be millions of people dying. And where it's uncertain if the virus will ever go away. The first reading that we've heard mentions uh, something very peculiar. It uh, reflects upon the time that the people of God spent in the desert following Moses, fleeing Egypt, and following this dream of a new country where they can live in peace, where there is food in in, in surplus where you don't have to worry about enemies or about your survival where God will take care of you and these first uh, stages of the journey kind of resemble our own first weeks during the corona crisis yes everything is different and we've left the life that we lived behind us but we're gonna be strong we're going to make sure that we fight, that we conquer this virus. And we were very supportive of one another. Even in the church, we we're like, well, yes, it's very different, but we're just going to put some cameras and do live streaming. And, you know, a couple of weeks from now, we can all go back to normal. However, we didn't go back to normal, nor did the people of Israel in the desert. Their journey would take decades. And the longer the journey the more they started to remember those days in Egypt where, yes, their life wasn't perfect, but at least there was food, at least they could drink, at least they were safe. And they start to complain. I, I wish we could go back. Uh, we wish that we never followed Moses into the desert. Does God still think of us or has he abandoned us to die here? And uh, those are very understandable reactions. It is very hard for us to adapt to a new situation and not being certain that our previous life and our previous comfort will ever return, that we will be safe again. And it is in those times that both in the time of Moses and the people of God in the desert and also in our days, we start to become anxious and maybe we start to despair. And it is in these times that we start to realize that the things that we took for granted were actually precious. It's one of the elements in the first book of the Hunger Games saga, where um, even though Katniss Everdeen, who is the, the main hero of the story, she fondly remembers a day that she um, she was trying to find some food for her sister and her mother. And uh, she comes across a boy who works for the local bakery. And the boy is standing outside. The weather is already getting dark. The weather is bad. And he's about to throw away some bread that was burned in the oven. And his father had told him, just throw it away. Throw it in the, in the garbage bin. And while he's about to do that, he sees this young girl, Katniss, standing there, hungry. And he decides to give her the bread, even though it was burnt, but at least they could still eat it. And 
Years and years later, when she's competing in the Hunger Games, that same boy becomes her ally. And she, never, she will never forget that, 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 that sign of, of, of care, of charity, uh, giving the bread despite the strict orders of his very strict father. And she remembers how good that bread uh, smelled and how good it was to eat it, even though it was burnt. Now that she is in that arena <coughs> and she doesn't even know if she's going to live to see the day, to see her family back, she realizes how precious that loaf of bread was, how precious the little that she had was now that she misses it. And of course, the bread in the Hunger Games is a metaphor for the love, for the friendship, for the safety, for your ideals and your dreams that you cherish. And once they're taken away, that is when you realize how great their value was and how much you miss them. It is in those times of trial that any comfort is welcome. And in the Hunger Games, uh, the, the spectators, the people from the rich district, from Panem, they can actually send help to their favorite tribute, their favorite participant. And these gifts descend in the, during the night with a little parachute, and it can contain food or, or medicine or, you know, a, a device that can help them to, uh, to win the games, maybe. And it's literally help from above. I think the Hunger Games deliberately plays with this idea of, of prayer, of looking at the heavens and asking for help. And that is exactly what happened in the desert when the people started to realize that, that they needed God, that they needed his help, that they couldn't survive without him. And it is in these moments where the people start to pray and where Moses prays for them that God comes to their rescue. And in the middle of the night, sends manna from heaven. And in the, in the first reading that Sebastian read in, in French, um, it's actually said that God for a while permitted them to get hungry. It's very weird. Why would God let his people go hungry? Well, exactly because he knows that when people are hungry, they realize that they need help. They realize that everything they took for granted in Egypt is actually precious. And once you receive it, like the manna in the morning that they discover so they can make bread to feed their children, what a gift that is to be able to live, that life itself is a gift from God. And through that gift from the heavens, God lets them feel and experience and taste that he is near the people in need, that he's close to them, that he walks with them, even if this journey still has to go on for years and years and years, he will not abandon his people. Even if they forget him from time to time in the desert, and the story of Moses is plenty of examples of moments where they have lost this idea that God is with them, God never gives up on his promise. And that finally is also the core reason that we celebrate today the feast of Corpus Christi, the feast of the most holy body and blood of Christ. We celebrate the fact that Jesus has told us that he will be with us and that whoever eats his flesh and drinks his blood, a shocking statement in his days, we see the reaction from the Pharisees and the scribes that are just like bewildered. What, what is he saying? How can we eat his flesh and drink his blood? Jesus guarantees his, his listeners and also us that he will be our food and that he will be really present. It is not just a symbol. When we eat his body, when we drink his blood, we will have his life in us. His, pres his real presence will be in our, in our hearts. We will carry him in our own body, in our own soul, in our own mind. He will be the food, the gift from heaven. 
And the Catholic Church has always seen the Eucharist that we celebrate as the fulfillment of that promise. And when we eat the bread and when we drink the consecrated uh, wine, we eat and drink the body and blood of Christ himself, who is present even when we are done with Mass. When we go home or we eat a pizza and we sleep, Jesus will stay among us. That is why we always have this, this uh, lamp the, 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 near, the, near the tabernacle where we, where we keep the body, and blood, uh, where the body of, of Christ, not the blood. Um, it is a sign that he is always with us in the middle of the night, early in the morning, when we are working, when we're suffering. He will never uh, be anywhere else than near us. And in these times, especially in this year, when most of us cannot come to church and receive the Eucharist, and maybe in some places, uh, some people that can go to Mass and, or dare to go to Mass, they can now receive communion. But for many Catholics, it is still a dream. It's still something in the future. We are experiencing that same hunger. We realize how important it is, the things that we took for granted, to be able to go to Mass, to be able to come forward and open our hands and open our mouths and receive the body of Christ and have him live inside of us as living tabernacles. It is something that we've often taken for granted. And, and, and there's so many that maybe on Sunday morning in the past would wake up and think, am I going to church? Yeah, it's raining. Yeah, there will be church next week, right? Or I've just gone to church on, you know, at Easter or, or Christmas. I'll go next year. <laughs> we, we, we've taken it for granted. But now that we can't, that is when we re realize how much we are, hung we are hungry for God's presence in our life how much we want to receive him in, in, in the communion, and how much we miss the family that is always surrounding the altar, surrounding the table where Jesus gives himself as, as bread and as wine to eat and to drink. You realize how much you love someone when that person is far away from you, when you can't reach that person. My father is in a home, a care home. I've shared this before. Um, he is in the first stages of dementia. And I haven't seen him for months. The reason being, as soon as the lockdown started, all the care centers in the Netherlands were locked up out of fear of contamination and infection. So my father has been inside, not being able to see us, to talk with us for many, many weeks. And just a week ago, we got news that uh, they were finally going to loosen the rules and we could go visit him right in time for Father's Day next week. And so I was initially looking forward to finally see him face to face because it is not enough to just know that you love him and that you think of him. He wants to see it, you want to experience it, and it's when you can't that you miss it the most. And so this past week we, 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 we were making preparations. I was preparing to go and see my father, and then we got word that probably someone in his community had been infected by COVID-19, which mean, meant that the entire care home would go in lockdown again for two weeks. I can't tell you how, how frustrated I was, how, how sad and even angry. It's like, why? Why can't I go and see him? And just before I went to the church to celebrate this Mass, I got word from my mom that the tests came in and the person who they thought had COVID-19 actually doesn't have it and just has a cold. So it means that the lockdown is lifted. And we hope so, of course for Father's Day, I can go and see him for real. You realize how much you love someone when you can't be with that person. 
And once you are reunited, that is when you feel that life, you feel the value of that encounter. That is what, it, what I wanted to share with you. I'm just going to very briefly summarize it in, in Dutch. Heel kort woordje ter afsluiting. Um, in uh, de serie The Hunger Games, dus de hongerspelen, wordt het verhaal verteld van een, een wereld die verdeeld is in districten en waar één stad heel erg rijk is en de andere districten worden onderdrukt en met name jongeren elkaar moeten bevechten op leven en dood in een arena. Um, allemaal middelen waarop de rijken proberen om die arme mensen te blijven onderdrukken. En de heldin van het verhaal, Katniss Everdeen, die heeft eigenlijk haar leven in armoede geleefd en ook zij wordt gekozen om mee te doen in die arena. En uh, haar leven, wat al niet zo best was, wordt alleen maar erger. En ze herinnert zich een, een dag dat ze een jongen zag die bij de bakkerij werkte en die een aangebrand brood uh, bijna wilde weggooien, haar zag en het toen aan haar heeft gegeven. En als ze daar in die arena uh, aan het vechten is en niet zeker weet of ze er ooit nog levend uitkomt, of ze ooit haar familie nog zal zien, herinnert ze zich weer hoe kostbaar dat brood was voor haar op dat moment. En hoezeer ze dat nu mist. Ik vond het een mooi verhaal dat ook een beetje een soort beeld is van de tijd die we nu tijdens de coronasituatie hebben ervaren. Waar heel veel van ons eigenlijk heel graag naar de kerk zouden willen, maar misschien in het verleden dat heel vaak hebben overgeslagen. En nu het niet meer kan, nu je niet meer te communie kan, je pas realiseert hoe waardevol dat altijd voor je is geweest. En hoe zeer je ernaar verlangt. Soms laat God die honger toe. Soms laat hij toe dat we hem even missen. Zodat we ons weer realiseren hoeveel hij voor ons betekent. En hetzelfde geldt ook voor die familie van God. Voor de gemeenschappen, voor de parochies waar we toe behoren. Juist als je niet kan samen vieren, realiseer je hoe dierbaar die parochie is, hoe dierbaar die gemeenschap voor je is. En het is mijn hoop en mijn gebed dat als deze tijd eindelijk voorbij is en we elkaar weer echt kunnen zien, misschien elkaar weer mogen omhelzen, als we weer naar voren kunnen komen om de communie te ontvangen, dat we dan dat leven en die gemeenschap met elkaar en met God weer echt naar waarde kunnen schatten. En dat we er nooit meer nonchalant mee omgaan. Zo van, ach, als ik weer naar de kerk gaan, nou ja, we hebben het kerst nog pas geweest. Het komt wel weer een keertje. Nee, ik hoop dat God ons in deze periode heeft geleerd dat we niet zonder hem kunnen. Als je mijn vlees niet eet en mijn bloed niet drinkt, dan heb je mijn leven niet in je, zegt Jezus. Laten we dat ter harte nemen. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us man and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now pray for each other, for the church, for the world in which we live, for the people we love and are concerned about. Of course, as always, uh, feel free to share your intercessions with one another in the uh, comments. And Father and I, uh, even though we might not be able to read them right now, we'll go back and we'll pray for each uh, one. Uh, today on the Feast of uh, Corpus Christi, we celebrate the great gift which Jesus has bestowed on us. And we pray that we can, in this Eucharist, unite our own body and blood to his so that we may be strengthened in our faith and love of God and neighbor. For this, we pray to the Lord. Today in the gospel, Jesus tells us that he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. We pray that in our daily lives, you, Lord Jesus, help us remember that you're with us, you're within us, and that we in our every action do only what you yourself in your goodness would have done. For this grace, we pray to the Lord, God's body for me, Lord. As we celebrate your presence among us, we pray for all those who honor that presence through their commitment to the church, especially our Holy Father, our Bishop, our priest, Father Roderick, our many volunteers in our church, churches all over the world and everyone who de dedicates their time in the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. For them, let us pray to the Lord. And at this time when there is so much violence uh, and an increasing incidence of racist and xenophobic attacks on the most vulnerable of God's children in our society. We pray for a rejection of racism and intolerance. For this, let us pray to the Lord. God's body And Inga just handed me two notes with all the prayers you already sent us. And I want to read them and share them with you so you can also pray for each other's intentions. First of all, Artemis uh, asks healing for all who need it, especially her friend Rich, who's been having some stomach problems lately. Also, God, for God's help through this hard time in which we are tested in our faith. For my fiance, who's having s several health issues, making it difficult to re recover, especially during the quarantine. We all pray for our young adult ministries. Please pray for my fiance, who is a refugee and couldn't. Uh, get his family for four years, couldn't see his family for four years. 
He has a very hard life right now because of the global racism in our world. Someone else says, for my father who has started uh, he, uh, having difficulties and he's unable to control his diabetes. Prayers for my wife and three children. Prayers for everyone around the world, thank you. Prayers for Denise, who is under the weather. So we're thinking of you, Denise. Please pray for my friend Maria, who lost her beloved aunt recently. Prayer for all the sick and those that are suffering from COVID-19 and for those with cancer and others. For those of us that struggle with our education, both comprehension and financial obligation, that the good Lord will see us through for trust in him. And prayers for your dad, father, so that's your dad, <laughs> and all the other people in the care homes who are going through such a hard time. Thank you for sharing your prayers and let us bow our heads and remember in silence these prayers, but also our own prayers and intentions uh, of those who have asked for our prayers. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Gospel ye for me. Lord, we thank you that you never abandon us, that your Son is really present among us in his body and blood, that he is at our sides in any circumstance, even in the most trying ones. Hear our prayers and help us all to reach you, the love of our lives and the love of our future eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now bring our gifts to the altar. And if you want, you can also uh, share something of your own abundance with charities in your uh, immediate environment or uh, greater charities. And if you want to support this particular ministry of bringing uh, these masses to the world in various languages and also using not just ancient Greek, but also modern geek, then uh, I invite you to become a patron over at patreon.com slash Father Roderick. It's by far the easiest way to support this ministry on a consistent basis. So patreon.com slash Father Roderick. Thank you in advance. we may be whole. This 
escape as promised by God. Through to his word, credits our Lord. Good for the good of the soul. Food of the good of the soul. Food of the good of the Orad, hermanos, para que ese sacrificio mío y vuestro sea agradable a Dios Padre Todopoderoso. El Señor reciba de tus manos este sacrificio para alabanza y gloria de su nombre, para nuestro bien y el de toda su santa iglesia. Señor, Concede propicio a tu iglesia los dones de la paz y de, y de la unidad, místicamente representados en los dones que hemos ofrecido. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Dominus vobis cum, et cum spiritu tu. Sum corda, abemus ad hominum, gratias agamus, domino Deo nostro, dignum et justum. Vere dignum et justum est ecum et salutare, nos tibi semper tuvique gratias agere. Domine Sancte Pater Omnipotens Eterne Deus, per Christum Dominum Nostrum. Qui cum apostoli suis in novissima cena conversens, Saluti feram crucis memoriam pros, prosecuturus in secula. Anium sine macula se tibi obtulit, perfecte laudis munus acceptum. Quo venerabili misterio fideles tuos allendo sanctificas, Ut humanum genus, quod continet unus orbis, una fides illuminet, caritas una cuniungat. At mensa migitur accedimus tam mirabili sacramenti, ut gratie tue suavitate pe perfusi, a celestis forme imaginem transeamus. Propter quod celestia tibi atque terrestria canticum, canticum novum concinunt adorando, et nos cum omni exercitu angelorum, Proclamamos sin fin dicentes. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Lenis Uncelia Terra, Gloria Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. 
Vere sanctus es Domine, et merita te laura omnis a te condita creatura, qui a per filium tuum Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum, Spiritus Sancti operante virtute, vivificas et sanctificas universa, et populum tibi congregare non desinis, ut a solis ortu, usqua a tocasum, oblatio mundo, offeratur nomini tuo. Supplices ergo te, Domine, te precamo, ut hec munera, que tibi sacranda de tulimus, e urem spiritus sanctificare dinieris, ut corpus et sanguis fiant fili tui, Domini nostri Iesu Christi, cuius mandato hec misteria celebramus. Ipse enim, in qua nocte tradebatur, accepit panem, et tibi gratias agens benedixit, fregit, didit qui discipuli su, tui, suis dicens, accipite et manducate ex hoc omnes. Hoc est enim corpus meum, quod provobis tradetur. Similimodo, quos postquam ternatum est, accipiens calicem, et tibi gratias agens benedixit, didit que discipulis suis dicens, accipite et bibite ex eo omnes, hic est enim calic sanguinis mei, novi et eterni testamenti, qui provobis et promultis e fundetur in remissionem peccatorum, hoc facite in meam commemorationem. Mysterium Fidei, Mortem Tua, Nunciamus Domine, Et Tuam Resurrectionem Confitemu, Donegen Venias. Memore Sigitur Domine, Eius Dem Filii Tui Saluti Fere Passionis, nec non mirabilis resurrectionis, et ascensionis in celum. Set et prestolantes alterum eius adventum, offerimus tibi gratias referentes, hoc sacrificium vivum et sanctum. Respice quesumus in oblationem ecclesiae tue, et agnoscens hostiam cuius voluisti immolationa placari, concede ut cui corpore et sanguine filii tui reficimur, spiritu eius sancto repleti, unum corpus, et unus spiritus inveniamur in Christo. Ipse nos tibi perficii at munus eternum, ut cum electis tuis ereditatem consequi valeamus, in primis cum beatissima ver Virgine Dei Genitrice Maria, cum beatis apostolis tuis, et gloriosis martiribus, et omnibus sanctis, quorum intercessione perpetua apute confidimus adiuvari. Heco sia nostre reconciliationis proficiat quesumus Domine, ad tosius mundi pacem ad quo salutem. Ecclesiam tuam, peregrinantem in terra, in fide et caritate firmare dinieris, cum famulo tuo Papa nostro Francisco, et episcopo nostro Willem, cum episcopali ordine et universo clero et omni popolo acquisitionis tue. Votis huius familie, quam tibi astar voluisti, ad esto propitius. Omnes filios tuos ubique dispersos, tibi clemens pater miseratus coniunge. Fratres nostros defunctos, et omnes qui tibi placentes, ex hoc seculo transierunt, in regnum tuum benignus admite, ubi fore speramus, ut simul gloria tua pereniter satiemur, per Christum Dominum nostrum, per quem mundo bona cunta largiris. Per ipso, per ipso, et cum ipso, et in ipso, est tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, ui in unitate Spiritus Sancti, omnis honor et gloria, 
per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Precepti salutaribus moniti, divina institutione formati, ademus dicere, Pater Nostel, Lies in Cenis, Sanctifice Tuor Nomen Tuum, Adveniat Regnum Tuum, Fiat Voluntas Tua, Sigut in Cielo et in Terra, Panem Nostrum Cotidianum, Nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentazione, sed libera nos amare. Liberanos quesumus, Domine, ad omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, ut opem misericordiae tuae ad iuti, et a peccatus simus semper liberi, et ab omni perturbatione securi, expectantes beatam spem, et ad ventum salvatoris nostri, Iesu Christi. Quiatum est venium et potestas, et gloria in secula. Domini Iesu Christi, qui dixisti apostolis tuis pacem relinquo vobis, pacem meam do vobis, ne respicias peccata nostra, sed fidem ecclesiae tue, iamque secundum voluntatem tuam pacificare et coadunare ad inieris, qui vivis et regnas in secula seculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum, et cum spiritu tuo, offerte vobis pacem, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us now pray the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, 
and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Panis angelorum, catos cebos viatorum, vere panis filiorum, non mitendos canibus, in figuris presignatur, omis agimolator, agnus pace de Lord, Fanny, Ferre, Jesu nostri miserere, Tu nos pace nos tuvere, Tu nos bona fac videre, In terra vivenzimum. Tu qui contacis et vanes, Qui nos pacis ic mortales, tu vos timi comensales, coherredes et sodales, fac centorum civi. We will end this Mass with a moment of adoration. I will expose the Holy Sacrament of the Body of Christ in the Monstrance, and we will take a few moments to pray in silence. But before that, I pray the prayer after communion. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your most precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. At the end of the adoration, I will give the blessing with the Holy Sacrament, and then we'll sing the final song. And then after a, a bit of a, a pause, uh, when we arrange everything, we will be back with another stream on YouTube and that is what hopefully is going to be uh, a bit of a tradition, which is digital pizza, which means we eat pizza, you watch digitally, and we chat about more geeky things. And uh, Sebastian and, and uh, Hank and uh, Inge in the, in the sacristy are all invited, of course. Maybe, well, let's do that. Let's order the pizza after we, <laughs> we've done the adoration. <laughs> but hope to see you uh, there and... Uh, if you want to help spread this ministry and this Mass for Geeks, if you know other people that may benefit from this, be sure to tell them about it. Um, and give this video a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel in case you haven't done so already. Help us to reach more people with the message that, is, um, that, that we have received in our turns from Jesus himself. Thank you.
You are there, Lord, in the sacrament of your love. You are there, really present among us. We are watching you, but more importantly, you see us. You look in our hearts. You see the hunger in us, the hunger for your love, the hunger for justice, the hunger for peace, the hunger for safety, the hunger for comfort, the hunger for friendship. None of that hunger goes unnoticed by you. And you show us to us, you show yourself as the bread of life, as the source of love and life, as the savior of our world and the answer to our prayers. If we crave love, if we crave peace, if we crave justice, 
let us always look to you. Let us always ask you to still this hunger, to be with us, and to spread your peace, your love, your justice in our world, your presence in our hearts. You are there in the sacrament of your love, and we thank you for it. Amen. vanishes in the light of his power. 